Howdy folks, Brian Cusco here at Triple B. Before I get into this video, there's a couple things I'd like to talk about. First off is I've been about a week into our Australia trip with uh, Mr. Kaufman and Ken and Harkin is over there with us too. If you want to check out what's going on on that, go link in the description, my personal channel. It's always down there. If you want to see what's going on in Australia, make sure you go down there and find that channel. Go follow us, see what's going on. Today, we've got Mr. Ben Morrill for you. As I mentioned last week, he's been doing lots of work into mapping out genomes of snakes, and he's gonna be working on Python stuff, and he's already doing testing for different colubrid species and venomous species, and there's another link down in the description for all of Ben's stuff where you can find out where to do that. And if you use coupon code triple B TV, all one word, when you're checking out at Ben's place, Rare Genetics Incorporated, you can get 10% off whatever you order, whatever genetic testing you order. So make sure you take advantage of that. Again, link down in the description. Without further ado, here's Mr. Ben Morrill. You're watching Triple B TV. I'm glad you made it out here, man, because I've, I've, you were the first person I thought of to interview when I first decided I should. I wasn't planning to do interviews at the show. And, oh, wow. uh, and you were the... I don't know what happened. I saw something. I, I don't remember what it was. But I was like, I wonder how Ben's doing with his research on the genetic stuff. And I was like, I should interview people at Tinley. I wonder if Ben's going to Tinley. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, and like I told you, I wasn't really planning to come. I wanted to. I was like, ah. But then when I got a text from you, I, I said I wasn't going to come. I was looking forward to your videos. And then that whole night, I had a hard time sleeping. I was like, I really should go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, I'm glad so, you made the decision yes. too, man. You were the you were the catalyst for me, so. And you were for me. <laughs> <laughs> Mutual catalyst, cataclysm. Beautiful. I'm, sorry, I'm not gonna leave you hanging. I just wanted to push that a little closer to you, so it's. Uh, All right. Yeah, there you go. That's the spot. That's the sweet spot. Just about like a, a fist from the the microphone, okay. basically. Yeah, perfect. Um, so how has so that, when I to first met you at Daytona, we talked about it. you were looking to possibly map out like the genetic stuff for, for pythons, ball pythons, maybe even like the morph stuff, and it, but it's taking you on kind of a different journey along the way. So what, where did it lead you from that time in Daytona when we talked? So since then, I've learned a lot. Um, so I went uh, from academics. I got a PhD at Utah State University um, working with python genetics, ball python reproductive genetics. Um, so I uh, worked a full-time job for a little bit, and then I got, finally got, my kids got a little older, I had a little more extra time, and I got back into doing some reptile DNA stuff. And uh, so that was, that's one thing I'm really interested in. I've kept and bred pythons for many years. It's been 20 years now since I got my first ball python, and I've had several others, Angolans and blackheads and all kinds of things. but. Um, so I uh, got back into that. I was really interested specifically in designing a sex determination test for green tree pythons because it's, you can't really sex them safely when they're young. Right. So a lot of breeders will have to keep them until they're a year old and that would be really nice to be able to know after a first shed, be able to get a DNA test. And so that was the first thing I was interested in. I've, you know, I've had ball pythons for 20 years. I love the genetics and I, I would love to be able to map that out. That's something else I definitely would like to do at some point. Um, but for me, wanting to be able to do some kind of DNA testing in reptiles, I had kind of some specific choices on how to get funding. So one is to apply for like a government grant. One is to ask people to donate money, you know, essentially get investors. Another one is to come up with a way to sell something to be able to then use that revenue to pay for the next test. And so that's what I decided to do. So the lowest hanging fruit, the easiest thing was to be able to design a test to determine sex in colubrids and venomous snakes, because their sex chromosomes are very different. Like in humans, our X and Y chromosomes are very different. The Y is much smaller. So it's easy to make a test to tell the difference between them. Um, in pythons, the, the X and Y chromosomes are very similar. But in colubrids and venomous snakes, they are ZW, and the W is much smaller than the Z, and so it was easy to, to make that test. And so that's where I've started. So now I have um, company Rare Genetics Inc., where we are accepting, you know, commercially that's commercially available test in colubrids and venomous snakes. And so we've been getting lots of samples in over the last year, especially the last three months. And uh, so I'm essentially just taking all the proceeds from that and just putting it right back into 
you know, more tests. The next one I'd like to do is finally finish the green tree python one. Since those chromosomes are so similar, it's a lot more difficult. We've done two or three rounds of sequencing and we're, we went from like 60 million base pairs down to like, you know, two or three. <laughs> we we kind of had an idea which chromosome, we were pretty sure we knew what chromosome it was on that's homologous to, you know, the colubrids and stuff. But, uh, and that's like, you know, 65 million base pairs in that range. But now we've narrowed it down to a couple million probably that we're, we're pretty sure in that area. So, but then from there, you know, I, eventually I would like to get to where we can do some of the morph testing as well. Yeah, that would be pretty exciting to see. I mean, imagine there's much more work that goes into that. The sex thing is like probably lower hanging fruit when it comes to pythons versus the, the morph testing. Yeah, it's, you, you essentially have to have 10 or 20 with the trait, 10 or 20 without. You have to make, you know, produce a whole bunch of sequencing data and then you have to look through all those millions. There's, if you have to look in the whole genome, snake genome, it's 1.5 billion A's, T's, C's, and G's. And you have to figure out what's different between males and females. It's not a small task. Yeah, it doesn't <laughs> sound like it. with the sex test, we had it. We were pretty confident we knew which chromosome to look on. So that narrows it down quite a bit. I'm sure that's very beneficial for the guys that are working with venomous to not have to try and sex their venomous snakes yes. manually. Yes. <laughs> and there are some colubrids. I didn't know this till we started offering it, but some of them um, are really small, first of all. So it's really difficult. Sure, corn snakes. I mean, some of them have, I think it's called filiform, I can't remember the name, but it's a specific type of hemipene that's a lot more uh, delicate, I guess. And so those ones, it's not really safe to pop or probe. And so those, those people let me know this is a really, really nice thing to be able to just send a shed completely non-invasive and be able to find out. And so you found that your clients so far have been a range of both people that are working professionally with like large numbers of animals, even down to maybe somebody who has a pet snake. It's just curious if they want to yeah. name it Carla or Carl. Yes, yeah. So the, literally the very first customer we had as Rare Genetics Inc. It was funny. We had, my brother helped me with the website. He does web design. So he got it set up. He's like, oh, what do you think of it? And I was like, oh, that's really cool. He had it set up so that people could just pay for the test. and. Then they had a, an order number, and then they just write that order number on a piece of paper and mail their shed in. And I was like, you know, that's cool. We hadn't posted it anywhere or said anything, and all of a sudden I get an order in the next day. <laughs> and so it's like, well, I guess I better figure out how to get this done quick. And so uh, he ended up telling me his backstory. He owned a, a tattoo shop, and he had had this corn snake in there for 10 years, and he somehow saw something I don't know I mean I had talked about DNA business but I hadn't said anything about this test being available especially not that it was you know where you can just pay all your money and get it done but yeah somehow he figured it out and and so then he found out he has a female corn snake <laughs> <laughs> nice man and and this test guys that you're listening to is fifteen dollars right yeah yeah which so is fifteen dollars quite affordable I think for something that's somewhat advanced it's, it's new it's very new yes. yeah, this is very recent that this is something that's available yeah. for the reptile market. Yeah, I I wanted to make it so that it would be affordable. Um, that's another way you can do it is be really expensive to start with. You have more money to help you know move things along. But I decided to go the longer route, make it as you know a really good cheap option, and I've just been slowly plugging along the last year, and we're picking up steam now. I think I had you know 100 sheds come in last month and that I haven't posted at all on Facebook or YouTube or or Instagram at all since April <laughs> so thank you all of you that have been sending sheds in but they do keep coming um, there's one breeder he's um, you know to a point in his life his his hands don't work as well as they used to and he's very thankful he can just mail the sheds in he can't pop or probe on his own anymore he just mails the sheds in so he's sent you know several to me both last year and this year breed uh, babies so you know, there's lots of different applications and I'm glad that there are people that find it useful and like I said more of that that comes through will turn around and design more tests. Do you think there will be at some point testing for uh, I don't know like diseases or something in them? So there is um, like the notavirus there is a test I know that uh, green tree pythons there are people that have that are have made that available. Uh, is that with, with PIA and yes, what PIA is doing? Yes. Okay. And I think there's another group as well that, that provide that. Um, P is the one I've talked to the most about it. Um, I think it's, I can't remember the name, something fish. Uh, fish head. Yeah, fish yeah. head. 
fish head diagnostics. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yep. So I know that that one. Um, other than that, I think the other testing I've heard of has been mostly for like DNA testing. It was mostly for viruses, and that's something you would usually do through your vet. Um, but then, then there's also like the bacterial tests that your vet would do. And those aren't DNA based, but um, it's certainly something that that might be more helpful. The more we know about the genome, you know, the more sequencing that's done, the more we know about what's normally there and what's sh- you know weird that pops up. <laughs> in academics in school as a grad student I was working with food animals so we were working with cattle with pigs with uh, also we were doing reproductive studies on mice to be able to figure out how it would work in cattle and pigs and because they're a lot smaller smaller gener- you know reproductive gener- uh, generation interval um, so we can produce a lot more mice a lot more pregnancies and figure out what's going on um, so the the amount of DNA information we have for those animals is amazing we know like if the specific base if there's a t there instead of a c then this is what happens you know you know that kind of a fine scale information but like in pythons you know it's very little has been done and so the more you know we build up people ask a lot of questions like morphs and different things right now it'd it'd be very expensive and difficult but as more testing and sequencing is done it'll become easier and easier makes sense makes sense well i'm glad that you're out there doing it, man. I was very interested in something. I was, it was funny that when I first met you, I was kind of really interested in that, like actually looking possibly for investors to do something like that. And then when I found out you were doing it, I was like, well, great. I'll just keep making <laughs> videos and I'm going to let you handle it. <laughs> Good. I didn't know that part of it. That's yeah. Cool. Yeah, I was. I actually, I, I actually had a guy that was looking to maybe, you know, he was had a history or not a history, but like um, experience in going and finding funding from different government stuff, doing political things. Uh-huh. And, we had been talking about it and then it was right in the middle of that when i met you and i was like yeah. no we, this guy's got it he's he's making it happen so yeah. thank you thank you thank I'm, you. I'm looking forward to uh the future of what you got going yeah. on over there man for i sure. appreciate it very very nice i love your videos and it's really nice being on here yeah man sweet that's perfect dude hey thanks again ben for coming on i really appreciate you uh reaching out to us and also uh, working with our viewers here to bring them a discount on your services there, sir. If you guys are looking to sex little tiny GTPs or something like that, like you heard about in the video you just watched again, link in the description for the thing and the coupon code is triple B T V, all one word, at checkout. You get yourself 10% off of, uh, of Ben's good uh, work over there. Next week, we're going back to the Herpeton Talks with Mr. William Espinshad, and he's gonna be giving a talk on his tortoise facility, as well as a lot of the research that he's been doing over there. Until then, you've been watching Triple B TV. Y'all take care. You don't, there's not a lot of, uh, my, my PhD, I was working with food animals, so I was working with, oh, one, one second. Yeah. <laughs> they always come in so hot on that thing, man. They come in real hot. It's <laughs> loud. <laughs> Uh, and of course, I, when I when I do the final thing, I'll, I'll put a little, uh, I'll do a monologue and kind of, you know, just the the way I always do it, a little yeah. monologue and have all your information in there so the people can that are interested can like get a hold of you and Perfect. whatever whatever you want as far as information, contact information, and just all the links that you want to have in the description will be down there. So sounds good. Yeah, man. <laughs> okay, do you remember where you were? Yeah, yeah. So. Howdy folks, Brian Cusco here at Triple B. You know what? How's it? Howdy folks, Brian Cusco here at Triple B.